Welcome back to Get Down to Business, the show all about small business, jobs, and entrepreneurship. So we know that one of the most difficult roles in a company is that of a salesperson. In order to succeed, you need to approach the journey with curiosity, diligence, and practice. Sales is no longer a simple linear process, and thus professionals in the industry and those who hope to enter the industry require new skills. That's why I'm thrilled to be joined by Steve Weinberg, who spent his life selling and helping others sell better faster, and more. He's also the author of Above Quota Performance, which just came out a few months ago. Steve Weinberg, welcome to the program. Thank you, Shalom. It's nice to be here. It's good to have you. It's good to have you. So we know that 50%, more than 50% of sales professionals regularly fail to achieve their annual sales targets. Why do you believe that that is, Steve? That's an astonishing number, isn't it? Uh, When I began my book, I did research on this, and I found a lot of credible sources, about about a dozen of them, that estimated that the amount of failure of salespeople to reach their quota was anywhere from 46% to about 65%. So I settled in on the number of 50%. I figured that was a safe number. But it, it seemed, and by the way, this has been the case for many years, at least uh, according to my research, at least 25 years, that, is, that it has been that way. And companies have seemed to accept that as a given. And that, you know, that's a separate topic as to why they've done that. But your question is, you know, why does that occur? If you ask salespeople why that happens, they'll tell you very simply that their quotas are too high. Uh, but that's not the case because 50% don't make it, but then 50% do make it. So that's evidence that the quotas are not too high. But the the other, I would say, the main reason for the failure is that most salespeople are calling on the wrong prospects and they're not, uh, they're not identifying who they should call ahead of time and they're wasting a lot of time calling on people that will never buy uh, or will buy from their competitor. Uh, I would say that's the main reason for that. Uh, they're also not understanding salespeople really don't understand who their main competitor is and if you ask salespeople who their main competitor is they'll give you anywhere from one to five names of of the companies that they normally compete with but their main competitor is do nothing and if the salespeople go, don't go into a, an opportunity prepared to compete against do nothing then they'll probably lose the sale Sure. Again, I'm chatting with Steve Weinberg. I know Steve has spent over three decades of leadership experience in sales, including some companies that many of our listeners are familiar with, including Dun & Bradstreet Software, uh, Deloitte & Touche. And uh, Steve has a bachelor's in economics and business administration and an MBA, uh, is also a CPA with experience in accounting, consulting, and a graduate level economics instructor. Steve, um, what you're touching on is really, really interesting because especially as we look at the end of the year, when everybody's sort of looking at their numbers, um, there's no other industry, there's no other profession where a pattern of low performance success would be tolerated. And like you said, there are those that are meeting and even exceeding their, their quotas. So it is possible. Steve, this is an interesting time to have this conversation when we're sort of everything's all about innovation. I know you're a big fan of LinkedIn. How do you suggest that even small business owners and entrepreneurs um, that might be sort of digging in uh, to how they can find prospects and close sales, what are some of the new trends that you would recommend our listeners pay attention to? Well, first of all, they, uh, everybody should be on LinkedIn. Uh, if you look at the, uh, the statistics that they publish, the number of business people, business executives, small business, medium and large business executive uh, that are on LinkedIn are in the hundreds of millions and it's on a global basis. So if you're mark, whether your market is regional or national or global, uh, you'll find people to sell to in LinkedIn. Now, most people are familiar with LinkedIn as a tool for managing their career and looking for career opportunities. But I found, and I was an early adopter of LinkedIn going back to, I think, 2008. But I found that LinkedIn is very, it's a very good tool. I call it my secret sauce. It's a very good tool for identifying the right people in an organization and reaching out to them 
in a in a proper manner and the proper manner uh, does not mean connecting with them and immediately trying to sell them but to connect with the right people and then offer them information and build a relationship with them on LinkedIn and then from there you co- you can uh, perhaps introduce yourself as, as a possible solution provider to them but as evidence of that uh, in my most recent employment, I closed the largest uh, sale in the company's history by a multiple of eight times over the previous highest one, which was quite a bit higher. And I found the prospect on LinkedIn and w- was able to approach that person uh, by by following the, the first thing I did was I followed the company. So I identified a target company and then you can set an alert on LinkedIn to let you know about news on that company. And the company alerted me that they hired a position, hired a person in a position that was uh, an area that we would normally target. I reached out to that person and offered my assistance and then uh, and, and explained to that person that I had been calling on that company. Shortly after that, uh, he accepted my invitation and then told me that the pro- that he had a project uh, in which he thought uh, I could possibly help them mm-hmm. from there. Well, St- uh, Steve, I've got to cut it off over there because I want to make sure we have we, we can squeeze in a little bit more of your tips, tricks, and okay. advice after the break. I'm chatting with Steve Weinberg, the author of Above Quota Performance, just published in September. It's a great read, and you can find out more about Steve and his book, steveweinbergsales.com. But again, a quick break. We're going to continue our conversation in just a moment. Don't touch that dial. Hey, we're back on Get Down to Business, the show all about small business, jobs, and entrepreneurship. And speaking of the sort of small business and entrepreneurship, and frankly, jobs too, we've been chatting all about sales, which is integral in all of those areas. And that's why this book that we've been chatting about, Above Quota Performance, written by Steve Weinberg, a sales leader who has spent over three decades of leadership in uh, sales, um, is uh, absolutely a must read. Uh, so Steve, we've been chatting a little bit about LinkedIn. You've been sharing your really, really practical advice and experience, but above quota performance, it's not just a read, it's really, it's a guidebook. Steve, what will our listeners walk away if they pick up a copy? I think they'll uh, receive a lot of ideas and tips that work for me over the years. And many of them are, are very non-traditional and different from what sales trainers will tell you today and in the past. Uh, you know, I came up through accounting and moved into sales. I didn't have a lot of sales training, so I learned a lot of this on my own. But very quickly, when I, one idea that I have in the book is to welcome objections. And this is like heresy for a lot of sales trainers. But for me, it, it made a lot of sense to understand why somebody wasn't buying. So if they didn't even, if they didn't voice objections, I would even ask them for objection. You know, like, why wouldn't you buy from me? And then uh, listen to what they say and not try to neutralize it or counter it or, or disparage it, but receive it as really helpful information that would guide me to make the sale. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. And uh, that's why everybody needs to look at this, whether you are in sales yourself, whether you're a business owner, um, or frankly, even if you're looking for a job, because frankly, I believe every single position these days is truly about sales. And there's some really, really staggering statistics that we were talking about before. Um, software firm Salesforce.com's third annual state of sales reported that um, uh, sales pros, 50, 57% expect to miss their quotas. Uh, this is in 2019, but unfortunately, that's continuing. So it is critical that everybody starts to get to above quota performance. Um, so what is the one tip, the one trick? You've already touched on LinkedIn, but what's the one homework assignment that you want to leave all of our listeners with in the week ahead? Well, I think people ask me what the number one mistake salespeople make, and it's actually a very simple mistake. Salespeople just don't listen and they need to improve their listening skills and they need to stop thinking about how to respond while somebody is speaking and just take the time to listen to what they're saying. If, if you improve your listening skills, I believe you'll improve your sales skills. It's a very simple That's change to make. 
That's great advice. That's a great mindset change to uh, to make as you move into the year ahead. Listen more. Steve, I've learned so much in our conversation. I can't wait to have you back on real soon, but definitely this is uh, definitely a New Year's resolution kind of thing. This is definitely a good, uh, good uh, purchase that folks can make so they could get it on their doorstep before New Year's. Um, Steve, how can we get in touch with you and how can we pick up a copy of the book? Well, you can pick up the copy of the book on Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com or uh, BooksAmillion.com. And my website is www.SteveWeinbergSales.com. And that's S-T-E-V-E-W-E-I-N-B-E-R-G.com. And I know in line with your advice, I know we could find you on LinkedIn as well. Just search for Steve Weinberg and you'll see uh, all of, of, of the great content that's being pushed out there. Steve, really enjoyed our conversation and I look forward to having you back on in the uh, in the new year ahead. Um, but what a great variety of conversations we've had on the show today. We've checked, we've chatted about with family businesses. We've talked about probate law. We've talked about uh, overcoming adversity. Uh, we've certainly talked a little bit now about sales. So much advice. I encourage everybody against subscribe, rate, review, and share uh, on this podcast, all about small business jobs and entrepreneurship. So you don't miss a single episode. You get on my website, shalomkline.com. Check out our sponsor, Tom Mirabali, healthplanchicago.com for all of your health insurance, affordable care act needs. Um, but a great conversation indeed. And I look forward to sharing more with you, our fellow listeners in the weeks ahead. We'll be back Sunday at 6 p.m. Central time right here on AM560, The Answer to Success. Let's get down to business.